In this demo, we are going to go over the creation of a CX Engage queue, and we're going to just show you how you can utilize the queue uh, to overflow calls between different agents in that queue. Prerequisites for this demo, I'm going to assume for the purposes of this demo that you do have two groups created in your tenant. Those groups will be referred to as Tier 1 and Tier 2, and you can see here that I've created a Tier 1 group and a Tier 2 group. I'll be using those later in the demonstration. And again, to access this, you go to User Management Groups. Just make sure you have a Tier 1 group and a Tier 2 group. I'm also going to be using the concept of a skill. In this case, I'm going to have a skill that is called Technical Support. So uh, if I were to go to my Skill Management, which again, I can get to by going under User Management and under Skill, I'm going to assume that you have a skill created technical support in your tenant. Obviously, for your own use of what we're doing here, you may uh, feel free to use other groups and other skills. That will just help you to kind of get the same output that I'm doing here on the demo. To create a queue, you're going to go underneath the Flows section and you'll go to the Queues menu. The CX Engage queuing system is a bit different than other environments. In Avaya, you might be used to thinking of things like skills. Uh, in Interactive Intelligence, you might be used to thinking of things like work groups. So every little environment is going to have their own way of describing what a queue is and how a queue works. So one of the things to be very careful of is to know what a queue is in CX Engage. In CX Engage, a queue is a list of things that need to be done. So let's say calls that need to be answered, callbacks that need to be made, chats that need to be responded to. So a queue is a list of all of a certain kind of interaction that needs to be done. However, a queue does not contain the users who will attempt to do that work. In other words, in many other environments, you might be used to thinking of adding a user into a queue or adding a user into a group. In our environment, we are going to be focusing on teaching a queue how to find a user. And I think that as we do this tutorial, you'll see why that's a pretty interesting way to do it. So let's kind of get started here. Um, when you're in the queue management, you go into create. And then at this point, it's obviously pretty important to put down the name of your queue. So I'm just going to call this technical support calls. Now, one of the nice things about CX Engage is that you can have as many different kinds of media in a queue as you want. We will put chats in a queue, emails in a queue, phone calls in a queue. We don't really differentiate the kind of an interaction that a queue can take, no matter what the interaction is, they all are subject to the same rules. So I could route chats to the next available agent, emails to the next available agent, all sorts of different logics like that. Now again, what you'll do is when we create the technical support calls queue, you will end up going into a flow and saying, all right, all of my technical support calls in the flow are put into this queue. Now I have to teach the queue what kind of an agent is able to handle technical support calls. So what I'm going to do is under the query, I'm going to hit the drop down box and I'm going to select the groups section. And then after I select groups, I'm going to hit the plus button here to add that to my query filter. Note that you can tell the queue that it should look for agents that have all of these groups or any of these groups, right? So we do have some interesting ways where I am looking for an agent who has all of these different kinds of group memberships or all of these different kinds of uh, skill memberships. So what I'll do here is in the all of these groups, I'm gonna type in tier one and you'll see that we have the tier one skill that I created earlier pop up. Frankly, you'll see that this is everything in my tenant with the name tier in your tenant, you may only have Tier 1 and Tier 2 because those may be the only ones you've created prior to running this demo. So I'll select Tier 1. So what I'm telling the system here is that when I am looking for an agent, I want to find a Tier 1 agent to handle this call. Now, in addition 
to handling a tier one agent to select this call, I am able to go through and add additional filters if I want. Perhaps I want to go through and look not just for a tier one agent, but also an agent who has the technical support skill. Now this may be interesting to you. You might wonder, well, why would I want to, you know, go through and say I have an agent who is a tier one agent and a technical support agent? Well, obviously we build our queuing engine to try to support any arbitrary a set of conditions, right? We want to give as much flexibility as possible. So in your environment, perhaps you wouldn't do something as detailed, but just kind of keep in mind that when a queue looks for an agent, a queue will look for an agent who is in a certain set of groups or has a certain set of skills, pretty much however you configure it. Now, what's nice here is I'm going to say that I'm going to look for an agent who is a tier one agent, in other words, a member of the tier one group, and who has a proficiency in the technical support skill of at least eight. A technical support call is going to look for an agent in the tier one group and who has the technical support skill greater than or equal to eight. Now what's nice here is we can teach the queue to change who it looks for over time. We call that an escalation query. Uh, this is a common contact center practice where a contact center will have calls go from one group of agents to another group of agents to another group of agents. But when you add agents into a work group, then you have to spend a bunch of time making calls and chats and emails go from one queue to another queue to another queue. And what ends up happening? Well, one call arrives into three different queues. Maybe that throws your numbers off. Maybe that makes your workforce planning scenarios a little bit more difficult, right? Because as you go to a larger and larger pool of agents, it can be difficult sometimes to pick out of the larger pool of agents the interactions that originally arrived. So in our system, when a technical support call arrives in the technical support queue, it never leaves that queue. It doesn't go from Q1 to Q2 to Q3. Instead, I'm gonna create an escalation query. And I'm going to say, all right, if 30 seconds has gone by and this call has not answered, maybe I want to look for a different kind of agent. Maybe I want to look for still a tier one agent. So in this case, I'm going to select the groups and I'm going to go through and select the tier one skill, just like I did earlier. So I'm still looking for a tier one agent. But maybe what I'm also going to do, in addition to looking for a tier one agent, I'm going to maybe lower the technical support proficiency skill required. Because up here originally, I was looking for technical support people who are greater than or equal to eight. Well, what if I instead say after 30 seconds, still looking for a tier one, but I'll take a technical support greater than or equal to one proficiency. In other words, I'm gonna be less selective on the kind of agent I'm looking for. So in this case, I'll look for technical support. When I select that, I'm gonna go from a proficiency greater than or equal to eight to a proficiency of greater than or equal to one. So this lets me, over time, select a different group of agents while at the same time not having to count the, the skill two or three times. And note that you can do this many, many uh, different times. So after 30 seconds, I'm going to go technical support greater than or equal to one. Maybe after a minute, so I'll add a level two query and I'll say after one, and then what I'll do is say minute, right? So after one minute, instead of looking for a tier one agent, I can look for a different kind of agent, right? So I'm going to look for, in this case, select a group filter. Now I was saying I wanted all of these groups and these higher queries, meaning that for the first agent, I would have to be a member of every one of these groups specified in order for me to get a call. What I'll do here instead is I'm going to do any of these groups. So in this case, I'm going to select uh, tier one. After selecting tier one in any of these groups, I'm also going to select uh, tier two. So what I'm telling the system to do here is that anytime I have a tier one or a tier two agent in the group selection process, I would allow the call to go to that individual at this point in time. At this point, if I go through and hit submit, I will have created a queue that routes calls to a technical support queue. 
expands the agent pool over time because note here at the bottom I did not select the technical support skill and also note that we do have the ability to prioritize this queue relative to other queues and we also have the ability to increment the priority of any interaction over time allowing it to be capped if necessary. Also one last thing to note when creating queues you do have the option to go through and track different versions of a queue. So for example, this technical support call includes all of the agents that are trying to service technical support. It includes the priority of this queue relative to other queues. All of that gets saved as a version one of the queue. Well, if I had many versions of this queue, then it might be that if I have a particularly busy day that I want to de-emphasize the priority of one queue that is suddenly swamping out my system. Well, rather than going through and publishing a flow, I could create a new version that has everything I have here and then just puts the interaction at a lower priority. And then when I'm done, going back from version two, the new version I've created, to version one. Or likewise, that if you wanted to run with a different set of skills in the morning, than in the afternoon, and you don't want to have to configure agents to go into and out of queues all day, simply changing the version of the queue that you're running throughout the course of the day allows you to quickly change the kind of agents a queue is looking for in an interaction.